Okay, so here we have. Uh, uh, we are so we have a sphere, a conducting sphere of radius r. Conducting sphere of radius r. Uh, so from here up to here is R and then we dig a spherical cavity of radius A out of it so uh, let's say we dig this out and this guy has a radius of A right and uh, at the center of the cavity there's a charge Q point charge Q okay and uh, part A it says find the surface charge density Sigma a and Sigma R and sketch them to show how you think they are distributed so we need Sigma a and sigma r. Yes, I agree definitely because uh, uh, if so, this is a metal, which means the electric field inside has to be zero. So this will induce a minus q here. And so sigma a will just be uh, that minus q divided by the area of the sphere. You know, its surface per unit charge. 4 pi a squared. Now, what about sigma r? Uh, no, it's not going to be because uh, uh, think about it. Uh, I would have uh, if if there's a minus q here uh, on the surface of the cavity, uh, I would have to get uh, the same charge induced, opposite charge induced on the surface of the big sphere, which means. Uh, this will put a Q uh, on the outer sphere. Right, yeah, it would, be, it would be the same. Because it's neutral, which means when you add the Q minus Q in, anywhere inside the conductor, you, you're supposed to get zero. Right, right, yeah. So that means sigma R has to equal Q over 4 pi, the area of the big sphere, r squared. This would be sigma r. Right. Although the, I meant the distribution would be... So it's, you don't have to do any calculations for this. It's uniform. So now we have to find the expression for the E field everywhere and sketch it. Uh, uh, find the field everywhere and sketch it. Meaning, he means uh, everywhere means inside the cavity uh, and uh, within the big sphere and outside the big sphere. So we have to find E everywhere. No? Okay, so inside the cavity, if we were to take a Gaussian surface, uh, so let's say that the cavity is here, and this is A. So if I were to take a Gaussian surface inside, so now my R is less than A, 
uh, if I take a Gaussian surface here, radius r, and I know my q is here, so uh, I can use Gauss's law, EDA, since I have spherical symmetry, equals q enclosed over epsilon, and in this case I'm enclosing q, and uh, due to radial symmetry, EDA, E is pointing radially outwards, and the area vector is also pointing radially outwards, so the angle between them is 0, uh, and cosine 0 is 1, and due to symmetry E comes out, dA is just the area of the sphere, the Gaussian surface, for pi r squared equals q over epsilon, which means E inside the cavity, let's call it EC, E of the cavity, uh, is equal to uh, Q over 4 pi epsilon r squared in the radial direction where this r uh, is pointing out, uh, uh, away from the center of the cavity. Let's call it r of the cavity. So we can distinguish it from the uh, big R, the, the R of the big sphere. So this is our cavity. It's pointing radially outwards from the center, of course. Uh, if we want to be accurate here. Okay, and uh, why is it closing on me? Oh, it's getting so annoying. Uh, okay, um, so that's for the uh, uh, cavity. Uh, now let me go to outside the entire shell so my Gaussian surface now will be here uh, with the radius R so if I take that golden surface to be my Gaussian surface so now R is uh, greater than uh, uh, big R Okay, if R is greater than big R, then what am I enclosing? Q enclosed will be uh, a Q plus Q minus Q, meaning I'm going to enclose Q. And so, again, Gauss's law, EDA equals Q enclosed over epsilon same argument we've made before so this is the uh, area of the big sphere uh, uh, the big Gaussian surface uh, Q over epsilon so that means Q of the uh, E for outside the big sphere E outside the big sphere will just be Q over 4 pi Epsilon r squared, and this is in the radial direction with r being from the center of the big sphere. So this is my e now, and uh, if I go in between, uh, in the region in between, so here. So let me redraw this. So now uh, this is my cavity and this is my large sphere. So this here is A and this here is R. Q. And uh, I know that I'm inducing minus Q here.
Uh, okay, so, um, well, um, the sphere is a neutral conducting sphere, which means inside the sphere E has to be zero, regardless of what Gaussian surface we take. conductor charge only sits on the surface so whichever uh, Gaussian surface we take uh, it has to be zero So now uh, we bring now we bring in uh, a new charge Q near the outside of the conductor. Okay, and uh, how does your answer change? So that means uh, uh, it's saying you you bring a charge here. No. Q. Right. Um, well, if you do that, uh, the surface charge density on the sphere will change. Um, if, if you put it closer to it. Um, right. Uh, the in the cavity, nothing will change inside the cavity. So for the cavity, uh, the the charge density will stay the same uh, because the induced charge is the same. It's not seeing that uh, external charge, um, and. Uh, the, uh, the and therefore, if that's the case, then the E inside the cavity will stay the same because uh, because uh, Gauss's surf uh, Gauss's the Gaussian surface will not see that charge, will not include that charge. Um, well, uh, what about the uh, outside the sphere? Uh, no, definitely E will change outside. E is no longer the same because now you could include the, you could include that charge in the Gaussian surface, so E outside will change. Uh, e outside definitely changes. Uh, and sigma R will change. Yes, on the outer surface, uh, sigma R changes. Uh, right, so that's that's how the results would change. It's not asking for mathematical manipulation. It's just saying like do it quant qualitatively. So qualitatively, this is what happens. Right. 